This unit is Automate Simple Business Processes with Process Builder. This is the second unit on the Lightning Flow module, um, which is on the uh, Admin Intermediate Trail. And um, here, my name is Jeff Alhada. If you're welcome to join me as I work my way through this unit, if I come across something I think that might be useful to you, I'll link to it in the description below. You can check that out if you want. Um, Sometimes I've come across like things around like the quiz or the challenge that sometimes is helpful. Um, or something I find confusing that I then try to explain, which hopefully I did a better job, which I don't know, maybe yeah. not. Um, or if not, you could just uh, join me as I work my way through this. Okay. Let's the different types of processes that you can build in the process builder. To find the key components used to create a process, build a process that updates the address for an account's contacts when the account's address is updated. I didn't read that right. Build a process that updates the address for an account's contacts when the account's address is updated. So if you update the account, then also update associated contacts with that account. That's cool. That sounds beneficial. So uh, the one I did yesterday from the library was choose the right automation tool. There we talked about um, how their lightning flow is the name of the product and there's process builder and flow builder are tools but then we also introduced Apex which is just coding that you could do inside of both process builder and flow builder, and then there was approval process, which sort of snuck in. Which I'm not sure why they snuck that in, that just doesn't, because it, fine. In any case, so it looks like what we're doing now is process builder, then flow builder, then we're going to combine the power of them, and then we're going to customize with approvals. So we're going to end up learning about each of these. And this is about Process Builder. Okay, Process Builder is a point-and-click tool that lets you easily automate if-then business processes and see a graphical representation of your process as you build. Okay. If this, then that. The components of a process. Every process consists of a trigger, at least one criteria, node. I don't know what a criteria node is and at least one action. You can configure immediate actions or schedule actions to be executed at a specific time. You can configure the actions to process immediately. I don't know what, I think, I think that's what they mean by immediate actions. It means like you could have the action go immediately as soon as the statement is true um, or you can have it go later. Here's an example of a simple process. Start opportunity. And if it's a closed one and high value, then if that's if that happens, then if it's true draft contract. have a time lapse of six days after close to follow up some of the task and then schedule actions. Okay. Trigger identify when the process should run. The trigger identifies when the process should run for to repeat the title much. For a record change processes the trigger determines which object and which of the following changes the process should pay attention to. Only when a record is created, anytime a record is created or edited. The trigger identifies when a process should run. The trigger identifies when the process should run. For the record change processes, the trigger determines which object and which. Okay, 
the trigger identifies when the process should run. That makes sense to me because you're saying if, if this thing happens, then do this. Okay, that's fine. For record change processes, are those different? If the process that's going to run will make a change to the record, the trigger will determine which object and which of the following changes the process should pay attention to. Only when the record is created or any time a record is created or edited. So basically, you have this thing called a trigger and that runs a, a process. And if a, the process is going to change a record, you then have the choice of doing that when the record is created or when it's updated. Okay, that makes sense. And by the way, I'm sorry, I think I didn't have my settings on the right microphone, so my audio was probably garbage up until now, but hopefully now it's better. Okay, criteria. Determine whether or not to execute actions. Oh, I hate executions. While the process gets one trigger, you can add as many criteria nodes as your heart desires. Each, well, a process gets one trigger. Why does a process get one trigger? Is this a criteria node? Closed one in high value. Is that an example of a criteria node? Each criteria node controls whether or not the process executes the associated actions. Is that what a criteria node is? A, criteri a criteria node sets the if then statement. Is that what I think that's what a criteria node does. That's what that's where you set the if then statement. If the record doesn't meet the criteria, logically, wouldn't you say it meets the criteria, it just meets it as false? Like, if this, then that. But if not this, then not that. Don't those both exist logically? Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. Whatever. If the record doesn't meet the criteria, the process skips those actions and moves on to the next criteria node in the process. In each criteria node, you can set filter conditions. Enter a custom formula. Like in validation rules, the formula must resolve to true or false. Opt out of criteria and always execute the associated actions. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because you have tr triggers, criteria. I... So this is the trigger, closed one high value. I'm not sure what the difference is between criteria and actions. Let's just read what action says. When a criteria node values the true, the process executes the associated actions or waits to execute them at a scheduled time. Each immediate action is executed as soon as the criteria evaluates to true. Each scheduled action is executed at a specific time, such as 10 days before the record's close date, or two days from now. At the specific, specified time, Salesforce makes sure that the associated criteria node still evaluates to true. If so, the scheduled action is executed. You can schedule actions based on either a specific date time field, 
on the record that started the process, for example, a month before an account's service contract expires, or the time that the process ran, for example, three days from now. Regardless of when the actions execute, here are some things you can do with a process action. Uh, what are process actions? Did we already see process actions? Were those defined for us someplace? Create records. Update the record that stated the start of the process or any rec related record. Submit the record for approval. Update one or more related records. Send emails using a specified email template. Post the chatter to a chatter feed. If you need more than what's available in Process Builder, build an automat auto launch flow. Auto launched. I've never heard of that word before. Is that a real word? It's a type of flow. Or an Apex class to fill the gap. Okay. We're getting into an assumption of knowledge of developing that uh, I don't have. So I will learn it. In Apex, in Apex, Apex, you can define top-level classes, also called outer classes, as well as inner classes, that is, a class defined within another class. You can have only one inner class, classes one level deep. For example, public class, my outer class, additional my outer class code here, class, my inner class, and in my inner cl class code here. To define a class, I don't know what this is talking about, specify the following, access modifiers, you must use one of the modifiers, such as public or global, in the declaration of a top-level class. You do not have to use access modifier in the declaration of inner class. Optional definition modifiers, such as virtual abstract and so on. I think I need to pick up with my JavaScript courses and focus less on this. That's what I'm feeling like. We're in a power round though through this because my goal was to get through the admin certification first and then focus full time on JavaScript. Then call the flow or Apex for the process. Process types. Process builder can automate a few ki kinds of business processes. The main difference is the trigger when the process starts. Type a record change. Process starts when a record is created or edited. Invocable. It's called by another process. A platform event. A platform event message is received. The diving board is now available. To keep things simple, this unit focuses on the most common process type record change. Process Builder. Before you dig into Process Builder, let's take a quick tour. The button bar, number one, lets you manage the process or view the lists of all processes. The canvas, number two, is the main workspace for the process. On the canvas you define three, the trigger. Ah. One or more criteria nodes. One or more actions in the action group. Build a process. Here's a common use case. If an opportunity created or updated trigger and its high value and close one criteria, then create a draft contract, immediate action. Six days after the opportunity closes, schedule, create a follow-up task for the account owner, scheduled action. Tip, plan out business processes before you automate it. Doing so makes it easier to configure when using one of our automated tool, automation tools. 
Okay. From setup, enter business processes, and a quick find process builder, and a quick find box. Name the process closed one opportunities. The API name updates to close one opportunities. Why new tab out of the name field? Description. Enter if a high value opportunity is closed one, create a draft contract and follow up task for the owner. No period. And the process starts when the record changes and click save. There we go. Okay, there it is. Add a trigger. Click add object. Why would it do that? All right, so the trigger is gonna be on the opportunity object. Select opportunity, and when the record is created or edited, and then we're going to click save. You may not be able to see the save because it's at the bottom of the screen. Add criteria. Now let's define the criteria. We check whether an opportunity is called one and if it's high value. In this case, high value means more than a quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Name the criteria close one in high value, no period. When conditions are met. <sighs> Leave whether the opportunity has been closed one. For field one, choose opportunity stage and click choose. For operator two, leave equals. For operator two, three, leave pick list. For value four, select close one. So equals pick list. And we're gonna add a row. Uh, I'd like it if they broke this into two steps. Now we've set the first part to determine if it's close one, and then we're going to do another one, opportunity amount. Equals currency, select greater than No, a greater than or equal. For type, leave currency selected. For value, enter 250. For value, okay, and then be sure all conditions are met are selected. All conditions are met. Selected and click save, and again, save might be showing up off the page. Add a schedule. Let's have the owner follow up with the account six days after the opportunity closes. Under scheduled actions, click set schedule. Set the schedule for 60 after the two opportunity closes.
<sighs> Under scheduled actions, excuse me. Under scheduled actions, click set schedule. Under Scheduled Actions, click Set Schedule. Where are Scheduled Actions? There's Immediate Actions. I'm pausing. Okay, I feel dumb. I had to go to Stack Exchange to figure out what I should have just read. Click Advanced and Yes. Okay, and basically what that's doing over here on the object, on this, I'm sorry, on the criteria, you have to click down Advanced. Again, you may not see this because it's a little bit low and I don't show the whole screen. There's something here that says, do you want to execute the actions only when specified changes are made to the record? If you click yes, then that opens up the scheduled actions option. If you don't click that, then there's no scheduled actions option that appears, which is why I couldn't find it. More of the story, follow your instructions. Okay. Under scheduled actions, click set schedule. Set the schedule for six days after the opportunity closes. And then click save, which again, that might be off screen. Add actions. Now let's define the actions that execute when the criteria are met. We need an intermediate action that creates a draft, contract, and scheduled action that creates a task for the account center. We need two things. An immediate action that creates a draft contract. We need, quote, an immediate action to create a draft contract and second bullet point, 
scheduled action that creates a task for the account's owner. Okay, I'm just going to fix this a little bit because it's driving me crazy. Better. Add actions. Now let's define the actions that execute when the criteria are met. We need number one, an immediate action that creates a draft contract and a two, scheduled action that creates a task for the account's owner. Number one, immediate actions. Under immediate actions, click add action for the action type, select create a record. name, create draft contract, and for the record type, select contract. When you select the object that you want to create the record for, the process builder displays rows for the required fields. To associate the contract with an opportunity's account, set account ID. For a type, select field reference. Okay. For type, select field reference. And for value, select opportunity, account ID, and then click choose. I just like to point out that there's I don't know the differences between these two.
and then tip ah when you select a value without the error to it you're selecting a field to use fields and related records click the value with the arrow next to it Okay. When you select a value without the right, the left arrow, the right arrow next to it, you're selecting a field. Fields are built in objects. I don't understand this. To use fields and related records. So if you have records that are related to each other. Make sure the new contract is a draft. I don't really understand what that meant. This tip confused me. Make sure the new contract is a draft and the value of free status, like draft in the drop down list. Status, pick list, draft, click save. Number two, a scheduled action. Under the schedule we created earlier, six days after close date, click Add Action. For action types, select Create a Record. For action name, we're going to name it a follow up task. Assign to ID, field reference, I don't know what a field reference is, opportunity account ID, owner ID, opportunity. Oh, I see, that's what the task is. It gives you the ability, oh, see. Now we select the field, not further in. Okay, maybe that's what that means. Priority pick list high. And then status pick list not started. Click save. Success, you've created a process that automatically manages your high value business opportunities. To start using this process, just activate it. You can expand this process to include more criteria and actions. If the first criteria know that you define doesn't add value weight to true, the process can then check whether high value opportunities closed and lost, or whether a quote was given with more actions based on those criteria. The possibilities are endless. My confusion is nearly um, matched. Okay, ba ba bum challenge. Keep contact addresses in sync with their account's address. Now this is an interesting thing they did up here where they made a learning objective. The quiz. That doesn't seem kosher. You've been given a requirement to keep contact addresses in sync with the accounts they belong to. Use process builder to create a process on the account object 
that updates child contact addresses when an account address is updated. The process can only can have any name. The process must, must have an update record ac action that updates contact mailing address fields, city, streets, postal, country, postal code country when the parent account shipping address field values are updated. The process must be active to complete this challenge. You may have to deactivate the validation rule for the account object. Alright, so let's I'm gonna pause and see if I can do this. Okay, so I think I did this. Um, created a let's just I'll walk you through what I did here. I'm gonna click save. Uh, so on the account object, when a record is created or edited, we're then going to have the criteria of update records and there's no criteria, we're just going to execute the actions, I think, I'm really sure on this. And the actions, um, oh, and this is the name, I need to rename this to update records. So there's, that's the criteria I set, and then this is the action, it needs to be an update at records action. And I, I think in terms of actually getting the quiz right, it's probably all you need to do. I don't think they actually check this, but based, I think, I think I'm, no criteria, just update the records, and then set new field values for the records you update. So we want to update on the related contacts, these folks. So we're gonna update their mailing street with a field reference from the account shipping street. Mailing city on the contact with a field reference for shipping and so too for the rest of this. We'll click save. We'll click activate, we'll click confirm. By the way, I deactivated all my other processes because it said you might need to do this. Now we'll check. Okay, folks, I need to take a break. Okay, day two on this, and um, I guess I'm still wearing a blue shirt, but it's a different shade of blue, okay? I just, I like blue. Um, okay, so basically, the, uh, I got in touch with the trailhead people, and they told me I just was messing up. And basically, what I, I didn't do right was uh, for the criteria, I just said if anything changed, which isn't true. Um, what you really need to do is you need to make sure that there's, there are criteria. The criteria are is if the account shipping street, city, state, postal code, country changes, um, I must miss that. Then, uh, we then have to update the records here. And that was um, what I had missed. I almost missed that again. So we're going to click Save here. We're going to update records. So once this happens, then we're going to set new records. So we don't have really criteria So for updating the records. If any one of these actions happen, then we're going to update the records and we're not going to have criteria for how we do it. We're just going to go for it. Um, 
So I should be able to click activate here. By the way, um, in order to do this, I had to um, make a copy of the other one. Once you activate, it seems like you can't edit it. Uh, so you have to make a clone, which is what I did. Okay, let's check the challenge now and see if that works. So disappointing. I'll be back. Okay, later in the day, um, I have gone through and um, reset everything. I have here conditions are met. I have the conditions. I have any of the conditions are met, which I'm pretty sure is the right thing here. One second. Yeah, that was, the trailer team actually gave me a, I mean, I sent in a picture, they sent me a screenshot, and I still messed it up. Okay, I'm going to get over myself. And then, um, conditions are met, and any of the conditions are met, and I've got all these in here, which should match everything here, street, city, state, street, city, state. Postal code country, postal code country, is changed boolean true, click save on that. And then the updated records, this is the action that we're told we need to have, which I have. And so if it, the previous logic was true, then there's no criteria here, right? No criteria, just update the records. City, country, zip, state, street. City, country, zip, state, street. City, country, zip, state, street. That should do it. I should be able to click activate. Oh, the only thing I did different this time is I went back to process builder and I deleted everything else that I had. That was dumb. Go back. So yeah, I deleted everything else. So this is the only one in there. So hopefully we could check the challenge to earn 500 points. It's taking too long. Okay, this isn't a me issue, I don't think. Uh, I think I'm such an idiot. <clears throat> no, to complete this challenge, you may have to deactivate the validation rule for the account object created from a previous challenge. I thought I clicked on this. In any case. Well, yeah, so it says first exception row zero, field custom validation exception, account number must be a character is long. That's probably that validation that's driving me crazy here. So if I switch over, I went to my objects, account, account number, I see there's a validation rule here. 
Let's delete that. Now check the challenge. to self follow the instructions if you don't not sure if you created this in a previous module go to your object manager go to account Fields relationships, go to account number, and then look for validation rules. If you have nothing here, it will work. If you do have something there, delete it, so then you have nothing. Okay, I'm done.